gospel according to Mark. Jesus went to the district of Tyre. He entered a house and wanted no one to know about it. He could not escape notice. Soon a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. She came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to drive the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied and said to him, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's scraps. And he said to her, For saying this, you may go. The demon has gone out of your daughter. The woman went home. She found the child lying in bed, the demon gone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's a story about St. Philip Neri, and St. Philip, Philip Neri was a the apostle to Rome, basically, at the time of the Catholic Counter-Reformation. He was one of the leading reformers in the city of Rome, and he was a beloved priest in the city. And the story goes that one day there was a man who was being taken to his execution, a man who had been you know, a murderer, and he was going to receive the capital punishment. And as he was on his way there, everybody was yelling at him and throwing things at him and mocking him and St. Philip Neri, Father Neri, right, he got in front of the man and he said, but for the grace of God, there go I. And he stood in the breach between all these people and that man. But for the grace of God, there go I. And I don't think that St. Philip was just exaggerating. He recognized that all of us there's always temptations that could be our downfall. And no matter how holy or righteous we think we are, there's always a chance that we could have our hearts turned away from God for some other reason. We learned about King Solomon this morning, who, even though he was a very wise man and had a excellent father, he still, despite everything that he knew, he ended up becoming very corrupted over time. He explicitly broke the three commandments that are in the book of Deuteronomy that kings are supposed to obey. Kings are not, are not supposed to increase the taxes and place burdens on their people. We read that Solomon, uh, in that year, he collected 666 talents of gold, which was an uh, immense amount of money that he had basically distorted or collected from the people. We also read that King Solomon had multiplied for himself a huge army, especially with chariots. And that was a command that God had told the kings not to do because he wanted them to remember that their strength came from the Lord, not from their military. And finally, and most devastatingly, Solomon acquired many wives and concubines for himself. It says that he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And you might be wondering, how, how does anybody have that many wives? It's because Solomon had made alliances with that many different foreign nations. And so basically, as part of entering into an alliance with them, you enter into marriage with a member of their family. And so as another way of Solomon, rather than putting his trust in God, and he was basically making all these political alliances to try to have a sort of um, policy, right, security policy for himself. And of course, those wives, those wives turned his heart away from Judaism and away from the one true God. This is one of the most significant commandments in the Old Testament. A lot of people misunderstand the commandment that the Jews were not supposed to marry people from other nations. It wasn't because God was a racist or the Jews were racist. It's because time and time again throughout the Bible, the people of Israel made it clear that when they would intermarry with foreign peoples, they would also take on their religions, to their foreign gods. They would take on their idols. And this, of course, happened with Solomon. This is one of the reasons why for many years in the church, 
the church was very hesitant about having people marry non-Catholics. It wasn't a pejorative act. It was just the realistic expectation that oftentimes when people marry someone who doesn't share their faith, oftentimes it can deter them from their own faith. Obviously, that doesn't happen all the time. I bet many of you even here this morning can testify to the opposite happening. But the point still remains that it is a danger. And we see this in the case of Solomon, that just these small ways that he began to open up his heart against the commandments of God, they eventually became huge problems, ultimately to the point where it made his entire kingdom fall apart after he died.